Hi there, Colin Kluipik here. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about half lap joints or lap joints. The concept is quite simple. You take some material out of one piece of timber and then you lap it over the other. A common size is a half lap joint. In other words, you take half out of this piece and then lap it over that. Now, what that does is it gives you a greater gluing surface area to join the two pieces together. And there's also some structural stability as well in terms of how the joint can move or can't move after it's glued. The other way to do it, of course, is to take half out of two pieces of timber, like I've got here, and then you join those together to form a hole. So a half plus a half equals a hole. And you commonly see that on framing joints like picture frames or even some simple furniture. Now, this is simple in theory, but it doesn't necessarily always work out that way in practice because you can see here that there's some misalignment between those two. And sometimes what happens is that you take too much or too little out of one or both of the pieces of timber, and then you might end up with a hole, but it might be a quarter in one and three quarters in the other, and that gives you strength issues. So accuracy is key as it is with any timber joinery. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either do this with hand tools, like cutting with a tenon saw and then chiseling out the waste, or you can use a powered saw like a drop saw or like this track saw on a track and use a machining process. Now, I would not suggest that you use a machining process with junior students because they're not up to that stage. They might be later down the track, but certainly not in the junior years. But we're gonna have a look at both processes in this video to get you started. Let's have a look. In this example, we'll use a corner half lap, which means I need to mark out the width of the timber across the two sections to be joined at the end. The timber here is 40 millimeters wide, but rather than measure that out, it's easier to take one piece and use it to mark off the other. Next, I need to mark out half the thickness. That's where the marking gauge is useful. The timber is 19 millimeters thick, so setting the marking gauge to 9.5 millimeters allows me to run a line along the edge to indicate how much timber will be removed. If you need a bit of a brush up on the marking gauge, check out my other video where I go through that in a bit more detail. You can run a pencil line along the marking groove as well. Be careful your pencil doesn't slip out though, like mine just did. When cutting this by hand, you'd also mark a line across the top, along the end grain as shown here. This marks out the joint and provides a convenient groove for the chisel to start the cut from. You can see I've made some intermediate cuts here with a tenon saw so that I only need to chisel out the smaller sections. Makes the job easier. To finish the job, you'll need to angle the timber in a vise and pair out the rest of the waste, horizontally or near horizontally. Notice here I'm being very careful to keep my fingers well behind the cutting edge of the chisel. These chisels are very sharp. And slowly but surely, you get a result. The other way you can do this is to machine out the joint. There are several ways to do this. In this example, I'm going to use a Festool MFT table and a Festool track saw. With this method, you make multiple saw cuts through the waste until it's all gone. The combination of the MFT and track saw make this very safe because the blade is well covered and the track saw stops within a second or two after you release the trigger after each cut. You can either retract the timber underneath the track until there's nothing left to cut, or you can go the other way. Just be mindful to stop cutting in time, otherwise you end up taking off too much material. So here are the two halves. You join them together and you've got a hole. Well, in theory at least. And I say that because there's usually more adjustment needed to get things perfect. This is where students can run into trouble. Not because they can't do it, but more because it takes some tenacity and practice, which many students just don't have the patience for. And that takes time to develop. You can see here that there's still a bit more to be taken out before it really is two halves coming together. When using a track saw, like I did in this example, the saw blade leaves these tiny grooves which need to be smoothed with a chisel. This can often be that last little bit that needs to come out in order for it to truly be two halves. With these two, I've actually swapped out the hand cut version with another machined version, and the fit is much better but it still did require the final adjustments with a chisel.
When gluing it together, ensure all touching sides are covered with glue. How much? Well, I always tell students, enough to ensure 100% coverage, but not that much that it would start to run off if you held it up at an angle. Point to note, this edge here also needs covering, so add some glue to this corner. This edge here takes the glue from this edge. Then press them together. Wipe off the glue and check that it's square. And then leave to dry. Instead of using a clamp, I'll leave it flat and simply place this old weight on it. But anything heavy will do. And there you have it, the glued finished product. I'll give you a close up view of that so you can see just how well that's actually turned out. You can see that there's very little gappiness there. And there is a slight amount of protrusion over the top here, but that's actually not that much of a problem because when you sand and finish or perhaps even plane that back, you've actually got a little bit of excess to create that nice, really super smooth result. But for a practice joint to do this as an exercise with a class, this is a very, very good exercise because it helps the students to develop the dexterity and the practice that they need. And of course, the benefit of getting students to practice these on shorter lengths of maybe off-cut timber or older timber is that once they think they've mastered it on one corner, you can just turn around and get them to try and master it on the other corner. And of course, they can't be glued if, they, if you're going to do that. You need to leave them unglued so that maybe you could do two corners and then glue the one that looks like it's going to fit the best. Uh, that's one approach, of course. But certainly spending some time in practice joinery with students is a great idea. And I would encourage any teacher starting in a workshop to spend quite a bit of time doing it themselves as well. Because the more confident you are, the more confident you'll be in teaching the students and your students will notice that. So there you go, a half lap joint, in this case, a corner half lap joint. You'll see more of these in projects coming up in future videos. We'll see you in the next one.